So, um, in a couple, so for this section, we're going to talk about how you can take a system of forces and couples and reduce it down to just a single force. Okay. So, uh, the benefit of doing this is you can, if you're trying to identify where you want to support a rigid body, if you can identify the point at which uh, your resultant force could be applied, you would then know where would be a good place to support the rigid body. So, in the case of, so we're going to go through a few different types of force systems where we can replace uh, resultant force and resultant moment to be just a single resultant force. So, in the case of a concurrent force system, which means forces all apply are applied through the same point. So, if we have force one, for example, force two, force three, force two, and force four, and all these forces, they go through a single point here. All right. We can say that our resultant force can be applied at that single point, which we'll call point O. All right. So R would just be equal to the sum of all of our forces. Okay. So the second type of case is when all the forces that are applied to a rigid body act on the same plane. So if we had, let's say we had force one, we had force two, force three, and we had force four. Okay, we could reduce this down to being a single resultant force. All right, and a couple moment about a point, and then we can if we offset this couple moment. So if we say um, we can say that our couple moment or resultant moment would be equal to uh, fr times d. So we can separate this by a small distance d our force, our resultant force, by a small distance d from point O, where we found our resultant moments and forces about, and uh, we would create the same uh, overall force, uh, our moment and uh, resultant force um, as our original system here. All right, so these are considered equivalent um, systems. So the next case would be if you had a system of parallel forces. So let's say this was our uh, z-axis here. All right. And we could have, um, we had a system of, let's say we had three parallel forces. So we had a force one, we had force two, And we had force three. All right, we can find at a given point in our system, we would have our um, resultant force, FR, which would be just the sum of all of our forces. And then at the origin point, we'd have um, our resultant moment. All right, and we'd have. Um, so we could again offset our resultant force by a distance d. To create this equivalent couple moment, so again our resultant moment would be equal to fr, the magnitude of fr times d. All right, and then our last case would be uh, the case of if you had a, we could reduce a system of uh, forces. So if we had uh, if we calculated our resultant force, okay, um, we could and let's say that was acting about the z-axis. All right, and then we also had 
our resultant moment about our point here. We can break our resultant moment into two components. We could break it into a component that would be perpendicular with the z-axis. Right, and we can break it into a moment that would be parallel with z. So I'm going to just call that mz. Alright, so what we can do is we can draw so an axis A and an axis B where A is the axis that the parallel perpendicular component of the moment acts about and B would be perpendicular to that uh, direction. Um, so we can offset our resultant force by a distance d to create our m parallel. So we can say that d would be equal to m perpendicular divided by our resultant force. And then our we would still have our resultant moment or our z component of our moment um, at that point O. Oh, right. And then the last thing we could do is because a couple moment can be applied anywhere on the rigid body, um, what we can say here is that we can simplify uh, or apply our forces both at the same point where we have both our resultant force and our couple moment about the z-axis being applied at that point. Okay. All right. So just to recap what the general procedure was for all these different types of systems, um, your first thing you're going to do is you're going to establish your x, y, z coordinate system at a the origin point or at a given point of interest. Um, so the second thing you'll do is you'll place your resultant force an unknown distance d away from point O. All right. Then you're going to find your resultant force by summing all your forces on the system. You'll find your resultant moment by summing all the moments due to the forces at point O plus any couple moments that are applied to the system. And then the last thing you would do is you're going to find the distance D using your resultant moment and your um, uh, resultant force. So you can set D equal to your resultant moment divided by your resultant force. Remember these are all just the magnitudes of your moments and your forces, your resultant force. Right. So we're going to do an example problem to show you how you'll go through this analysis procedure to calculate D. Okay. 